starts with an idea. Courses specifically designed to build new perspectives, capabilities, and the discipline required for innovation. Innovation is a mind shift. We enable learners to develop a new perspective of looking at life around them. Innovation needs empathy. We encourage learners to engage with real life situations and identify opportunities for innovation using design thinking and come up with scalable and sustainable business solutions. Innovation is building the future. Learners are exposed to speculative design, emerging technologies and trends to propose future products, services and businesses. Learners work closely with the industry professionals and mentors and get an opportunity to prototype, build, and test their solutions with the various labs and workshops. Imagination is the first step of innovation. Welcome to the world of innovation. Apply now for the MIT ID Innovation Program and online courses. Calling the innovator in you. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you all to the series of webinars and workshops by MIT Institute of Design. Since last five years, as a part of Design Connect program, we are interacting with design aspirants through various seminars, webinars, and workshops where experts share their experiences with the young budding designers. This year, we have moved one step ahead by keeping the sessions more interactive and engaging the students to get hands-on experience on various topics of design. So today's Design Connect, Abhikal Se Nata, a design thinking workshop, a virtual session by Professor Harshit Desai sir. He is the project director, MIT ID Innovation and HOD of Design Management and Innovation Program at MIT Institute of Design, MIT ADT Pune University. I feel honored to welcome and introduce Professor Harshit Desai sir. Professor Desai is an industry professional who has spent more than a decade in the higher education domain he is a faculty at MIT ID and is currently pursuing his PhD. He is deeply immersed in building India's foremost innovation education practice in collaboration with fellow industry leaders. So now I request Professor Harshit Desai sir to take over the further proceedings of the session. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you team for the wonderful introduction and uh, thank you everybody for joining on this wonderful afternoon for this uh, webinar come workshop on uh, design thinking and innovation. I think uh, everybody realizes that the importance of innovation and creativity in today's time, but so far we haven't had a program which can teach somebody innovation and we are very proud that in past few years we have been able to uh, kind of really have a, a very interesting program which uh, has been able to successfully develop the innovation capability in in the participants so uh, here we are to share some of our experiences some of the stories that we have been part of and uh, through that we we hope that you will be able to understand what the innovation program is all about and how does design design thinking and all of that fits into this larger space of innovation and hence the name abhikalp se nata because as long as you are able to identify the relationship between design and innovation i think that's where the opportunity lies so without further ado i would take you through a presentation which gives you an overview of what the program is all about and then we have some of our very interesting team members who have been very, very uh, kind of actively involved in all the innovation activities and the projects here on the on the campus here. And we would like to showcase some of our work and some of the projects that we have been doing here. So uh, this is where we are and uh, we are actually in the uh, innovation program studio. This is what it looks like. And 
we are part of the larger mit group of institutions uh, we are part of the larger university ecosystem which mit group has created for past few decades now and specifically we are part of the mit adt university so adt stands for art design and technology university here the attempt as as the name suggests is to bring art design and technology together and under the banner of mit adt university we have a variety of different design uh, and technology and art institutions which have different programs uh, which you can see here uh, on the slide but more specifically we are housed in the design institute design institute mit institute of design which which is part of mit adt university has been in the existence for past 15 years this is like more than uh, one and a half decades of very very progressive design education that we have been part of and as you can see we run a variety of programs different disciplines across uh, different specializations of design you can see some of the programs that we offer here right from animation to user experience to transportation to interiors and most of the industry relevant disciplines of design is where we offer a bds mds and phd programs however in our own journey of past 15 years we also realized that uh, how the world is moving where the industry is heading and what is really lacking when it comes to this kind of an education and fortunately we were working very closely with the industry partners and all the uh, industry professionals through which we had this realization that probably there is something more to design is design in itself is a is a field and there are so many things to be learned in design but often we have seen that design alone is not sufficient in the industry when you really work on real life projects and when you really want to bring an idea to reality i think design needs people who are also equally equipped or at least aware about technology business and other allied disciplines and that is what was our attempt to kind of really bring together this innovation program and as you can see that it is very very tightly integrated into the industry and the startup world and as you can see in the industry there are skill sets which are constantly shifting there are new skills there are new capabilities which participants or which professionals need and this is what we have done through our own uh, attempt to put it all together you look at any reports right I mean, right from the world economic forum to all the consultancies who predict that what is going to be the future of work what is going to be the future of jobs across the board people are putting these skills as the critical skills and today irrespective of whatever discipline you are whatever work experience you come from or whatever background you come from i think creativity design thinking critical thinking empathy storytelling these are some of the skills which employers and everybody are finding very very valuable and believe me this is like an add on to your existing technical skills or any of the domain skills which you come with so with this attempt uh, we have this framework and this is what we also define as as innovation for ourselves that the intersection of design technology business and humanities so these are the four pillars on which the innovation program is built it's a one year program in which even the classroom sessions as as we call them all the classroom lectures they are also industry integrated so most of the faculty who come for the program they are either industry professionals they are working professionals they are entrepreneurs designers innovators in their own capacity and then they take out time and they spend it with the participants of the program so it's a kind of a co learning exercise which happens for the first 6 months of the program towards the end the remaining 6 months of the program is where the students have to take up a project or go out into industry and work on a real life application of what they have learnt into the classroom not to say that the classroom exposure itself is very industry focused and i think that's the major highlight of what we have been able to put together into the innovation program as a as a structure and uh, as you'll see in the in the later part of the webinar is how some of these projects have become integrated into the curriculum itself and that is what is very very valuable from a learning point of view from a syllabus point of view this is what we have uh, 
put as a schematic. Uh, I'm not listing down the, the uh, kind of specific topics, but if you start from design, I think what, what we have done is the essence of design in terms of design as a problem solving activity, the activity to really come up with novel solutions is what the focus is on. And then the participants get exposed to design thinking, human centered design principles, through this, they get exposed to the product design, user experience design, and all these disciplines via the different projects that they do. Another interesting part of the design side of things in the program is that there is a very interesting input on uh, speculative design and design fiction, which are very, very emerging areas. And uh, I'm very glad to say that probably we are the only program here in India, which has this as a full course, which the students undergo. And uh, it kind of really develops a very unique uh, thinking or a thought of line for them to solve or come up with new solutions or innovative solutions. So at the design stage, the emphasis is on problem solving, finding out the opportunities and coming up with the right kind of ideas, which they can further work on. And which as we know in the real world need a integration of technology. So as a part of the program, uh, they get introduced to various technologies even while they are doing the projects and as separate boot camps and separate workshops on a variety of topics like machine learning, blockchain, AR, VR, robotics, IoT. Most of the industry relevant technologies is what the students get exposed to, but in a very applied way, because the, the attempt is that there are ideas which they are already working on, and then that will need a technology integration to make it work. Then comes the business part where, as everybody knows that innovation and business goes hand in hand means the real definition of innovation at times is that an idea which can really create some economic value. So the whole point of taking an idea to the market needs some needs them to understand business models, marketing management, and all these principles, which are not often covered in any traditional program. So here they get a very unique flavor of actually building out their ideas, making them into ventures, or kind of going through that entire journey of taking an idea to a reality for which obviously there are multiple business concepts like product management, trend forecasting and uh, business model innovation is what they have to understand. And last but not the least, I think uh, as, as we go towards this new uh, way of working or this new uh, future of work, uh, the way you come across as a person, your interpersonal skills, your communication skills, your skills of understanding how teams work. These are all very integrated in the work ethics nowadays. So there is a steady stream of workshops or inputs or through different uh, activities that we undertake here. Students do realize this importance of how things which are very, very important from an interpersonal or their own uh, kind of communication skills are equally important and they get an opportunity to kind of work on it and improve on it uh, through through the program. So that's the larger syllabus of the program. And these are some glimpses which we had uh, when, the, when the batch was here on the campus and obviously we'll get to see a good glimpse of the studio also where we operate from. Uh, this is another aspect which uh, as I highlighted is because from day one, you are learning from people who are possibly your future employers. Means, as I said, there are industry professionals and other people who have their own organizations and they are the ones who are coming and spending time with the participants. So from day one, you start understanding what are the industry requirements? How do you really prepare yourself for a role and also get clarity on what all uh, roles exist for you in, in the innovation program. And these are some of the companies who have really worked very closely with us right from the first batch. And uh, most of the students have been working with them or have been associated with them in some or the other capacity. And these are the companies, as I said, who support us for the projects, for the uh, internships, and eventually for the final placements. And uh, there are some samples or just to kind of give you because uh, the, the list is longer, but just to give an example of how students from a different background, they come here and they are able to kind of change the career, gain a very different track uh, to upskill themselves and eventually find a place in the industry. 
So this is uh, some of the examples where some of the students have been uh, working and they do keep coming back and we, we know that they are all uh, kind of uh, doing the right thing and enjoying their uh, time in the industry as well. So these are a few glimpses of what the final uh, outcome of the program happens uh, as a concluding thing when they complete the program. Yes, so that's what the program is all about. Uh, as you must have realized, uh, I've been talking about how the essence of the program is the projects that we work on. And due to this unique uh, engagement model that we have, the, the team in the innovation lab here, we, we call them as a team because uh, all the students who are part of the cohort, at the same time, all the mentors and the visiting faculty or the faculty, they all are collectively, collaboratively working on a variety of projects. In, uh, uh, for interest in the time, we have chosen two of these uh, projects or two of these uh, uh, activities, which uh, have been uh, consistently uh, kind of building up in terms of uh, what does it mean to bring design, technology, and business together. So we have a live uh, example of how this program is put into the action. And I think that's the best way to understand what the program is all about. Is uh, uh, the real way to understand the program is to experience it. Uh, but we have tried to kind of curate some uh, sessions or some projects for you so that you get an understanding of what uh, actually happens when you are part of the innovation program here. So I have uh, two of my colleagues or team members, uh, Harshesh and Vineet here, and. Uh, Harshesh uh, is again, uh, he has, has his own industry experience in the field of automotive and robotics, but he has chosen to build a healthcare startup. And then he's part of the innovation program here. And uh, I would like him to uh, briefly talk about his uh, background and his journey and the experience of the innovation program so far. And then after that, we will come back to uh, my other colleague, Vineet, who is also <coughs> building an interesting venture. Over to you, Harshesh. Thank you. Thank you so much, Harshit sir, for introducing me. So good afternoon and welcome everyone. Like Harshit sir said, my name is Harshish Gokani and I have previous experience with Mercedes-Benz as well as a lot of robotics ventures. Uh, here I am, the founder of For Health, and we are working very closely with the innovation uh, program team uh, to take in this journey of our progress. So uh, our core purpose as For Health is to transform the physical rehabilitation and fitness sector by developing robotic assistive technologies. So let us begin with thinking of a time we all would have had a pain somewhere in our body that just wouldn't go. Uh, imagine a neck pain, back pain, leg pain. And now imagine people who possibly have to live with this forever. There are more than 1.7 billion such people who are suffering from uh, disorders and disabilities that require physiotherapy exercises as treatment. So typically when we listen to a word like physiotherapy, we would imagine uh, pictures in our head similar to this. Now we are for health and what we do is we are redefining the way physiotherapy works. If you see over here, we have built a robotic device that learns and takes over all these physiotherapy exercises from a physiotherapist. With this, a physiotherapist can now probably attend multiple patients at once with the help of an app that we have created where each device is connected to a patient and the device works as if it's a physiotherapist itself. It also reduces the fatigue. For example, typically you would uh, assume a tiny physiotherapist, a heavy patient picking up the leg would become hard. Our device kind of achieves that with the help of the joints that we have. So if you see this, what we have already done is created a prototype in our lab. And this is me on the device being controlled by our mobile app where this device is picking up my leg. So if you can see, it is connected on the hip, on the knee, as well as the ankle, and it is picking up my leg. You can also imagine this device with me probably lying on my abdomen and doing different exercises, me lying on my side and doing different exercises. So this is a prototype that we have built. We are in a journey to build the next product, next prototype, which will be a complete representative of the final product some photos of which we saw on the earlier slide. Now, obviously something like this is not possible without a team. So we have an operational team coming from different uh, backgrounds, but what is very noteworthy here 
is Ravikant Sahu and Yash. So if you see here, they are MIT IT Innovation alumni, and throughout their course of six, I mean, of of a year in the MIT IT Innovation, they worked with us as a live project. Eventually, it matched both of them, and we kind of took them over as employees in the company. We also have people from bioengineering backgrounds, web developers, people who have worked in IKEA as well as from NID. But our strength lies in our medical advisors. So. Being part of this project or this company, you will be talking to medical advisors in and out almost on a weekly basis. We have multiple mentors from different industries who are accelerating our journey as well. So for you to understand a little more on what we actually do, I will hand this over to our colleagues, Ravikant and Yash, who also happen to be alumni of the innovation program. So there you go. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am Ravikan Sahu. Uh, I am a student of MIT ID uh, Innovation Program. Uh, this is the representation of the uh, arm that we are, we are we are supposed to build. And uh, this is the, uh, uh, for example, uh, this is the ankle joint, uh, knee joint, and hip joint. Uh, at current, we are working on the knee joint assembly. So we have ordered some of the components uh, from outside, and uh, we are building the. Uh, other components to assemble it whole thing. Uh, I'll take you through the 3D printed parts to uh, like visualize the whole thing, the whole assembly. Uh, I'll explode all the components of this uh, assembly so that you can have a better understanding of this thing. This uh, joint is a combination of uh, uh, hardware things and electronics things. So quickly I'll show you how components are uh, assembled. Uh, as I said, these are a uh, combination of electronics and uh, mechanical parts. We need a software to handle all this. So I would like to request uh, Yash to hand over the, uh, to proceed. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yash and I work as a user experience designer for For Health. And uh, as a UX designer, my primary focus or the company's primary focus is to understand the pain points of uh, the physiotherapist and patients and kind of help them have a very seamless experience throughout their, uh, you know, th physiotherapy journey. Uh, so the kind of uh, robotic arm we have built as a, as a designer, as a product designer for them, uh, we kind of build an interface where um, the microcontrollers, the, the micro uh, computers with which we control the complete robotic arm, we have an interface which we have designed. Uh, kind of, you know, helps us move and make uh, certain adjustments that the, uh, that the physiotherapy uh, fist wants to make it. So I'm kind of uh, going to give you a glimpse of how the entire interface works. Um, so this particular interface is designed both for physiotherapists and the patients who will be using it. So I'll just log in into the application. And once you log in, you basically you can choose as, as, in, as if you are entering as a patient or you're entering as a physiotherapist. For example, if you enter as a physiotherapist, you, can, you have various uh, treatments that the physiotherapist wants to make. And with that, we have different options through which you know, uh, the physiotherapist kind, kind of controls the entire device and maps the entire treatment that the, uh, uh, that the patient has to go through. So to sum it up, uh, the idea here is to make the journey very seamless for both the doctors, that is the physiotherapist and the patients, uh, so that we can or we can catch up on the pain points that they have and kind of bring them a very, very easy solution uh, to cope up with for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Yash. Thank you, Ravikant. And thank you, Harshesh, for your wonderful inputs. And uh, guys, as you can see, this is something which uh, yeah. was built in, say, uh, six months with the help of all the team members which Harsha showed. And uh, just to highlight the fact that everything and all the projects that we do here at the innovation program, the attempt is to make it as practical, as live and as industry focused. Uh, 
So uh, moving on to Vineet, I think uh, this is probably one of the most uh, unique uh, ideas that uh, you must have you you may have come across in in some times, because imagine uh, making products which are not only inspired by sound but they are actually a 3D representation of sound, and the possibilities that lie at this intersection of converting something which is as uh, as unique as somebody's name or unique as somebody's voice into a memento or into a product which uh, somebody can cherish for the entire life. So that has been the huge, huge success that we have been able to achieve here um, at MIT ID Innovation. Uh, I call upon Vineet, who has been a, a team member and also an alumnus of uh, MIT Institute of Design, um, where through a consistent effort of past so many years, uh, we have come to a stage where uh, we, we have such a unique proposition, which is uh, just kind of waiting, uh, like waiting for the world to uh, embrace wholeheartedly. And uh, Vineet will be the right person to share his journey and talk about this unique project, uh, Sonkar, that uh, we have been building here. Over to you, Vineet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ashit, sir, for um, introducing me. And um, as he has rightly said that uh, we are working on it for a quite some time now, and uh, hopefully we'll be soon out with the set of products that we are working on. Uh, a big hello to everyone. Uh, as Harshit said, has already introduced, I'm Vineet. I'm the founder of uh, Shankar. Uh, a quick introduction to my background. I'm a mechanical engineer, uh, later turned into a product designer, and I'm the alumni of MIT Institute of Design. Uh, since the last uh, two and a half, three years, I've been working uh, with the innovation program uh, and I've been developing this venture of my own, which is Sonkar. So Sonkar actually is more than a design studio, whereas, uh, whereas so I has already told you that we uh, are developing physical, tangible products made from sound. Uh, I also want to talk about the innovation lab and the environment that this uh, lab and this place has to offer. But uh, before I go there, uh, let's first talk about what I've been doing for the past two and a half, three years. And to help you understand what we are doing, I have a small uh, video to share. Let me play that video for you so that it will give you a better understanding of um, what actually Songkar is. So let me share my screen. Yeah, so I hope I hope that video kind of already gives you an introduction of what uh, Songkar is. Um, so if I have to give you an analogy, you know, Songkar is the dark room for sound. Okay, so previously, how uh, people used to take their uh, film roles to a dark room to get um, a photograph developed, um, we at Songkar we process your sound. Okay, uh, so the way in the olden days negative films were processed we process sound and create physical and tangible products out of that uh, when i say physical and tangible products uh, it passes through our algorithm so this we have our own, we have our own platform technology where we pass uh, sound through an algorithm and it is eventually converted into a physical form uh, so if I have to put it in simple words, Songkar is sound realized physically. The sound that we hear or the sound that we um, cannot touch and see can now be 
uh, realized in a physical way uh you might be wondering that why sound out of you know out of all the other things why is it that uh we are so excited about sound and why why is it that we are working on sound in the first place uh so let's not go into the details but if i have to tell you quickly what it why we are working on sound let us first talk about what sound is so fundamentally it is a vibration that is where the sound starts from um if we have to look for at a meta level or at a metaphysical level the whole existence is basically vibration so it can also be said that everything that is around us or at a metaphysical level everything where we are living is in a way sound okay if we go one step below um, uh, and if we try to understand what sound is then sound uh, is a is a very important tool for survival and we use sound uh, for many survival activities uh, since the time we were hunter gatherers till time today uh by the way that is that is one sense that we have out of all the five senses which we have no voluntary control over even when you sleep your hearing sense is always on and that is one of the reasons why it helps you in survival these two uh, these are two perspectives of looking at sound and these two perspectives happen at a subconscious level they are always there but we might not be able to relate to it or we might not be able to understand what's happening uh there is a more applied and there is there is a more direct way of how we use sound and two of the most common examples that i would like to give here is communication so we have developed different languages and we communicate using those languages and sound is the one of the most important mediums used and secondly as all of us would agree is music i don't need to explain how music is universal and how music has the ability to convey emotions uh so again going back to the question why sound the most important reason why we care about sound is because out of all the five senses sound has the maximum capacity to convey and carry emotions okay so if there are any special moments if that have already happened or if there is any special message or if there is any particular moment that you want to relive uh we can capture it and you can realize it physically in a form of a product now when you say a product we have uh, the scale is pretty uh, pretty large uh, we can have uh, a product which is sitting in a living room which is like a vase uh you can also have huge installations to a very small scale where you can also have rings and pendants and earrings as products so moving on let's see some of the products that we have initially developed and which we will launch um soon uh so the first set of products is the non personalized products where we are using generic sounds to create uh, different forms and then converting those forms into products so the product that you see on your screen is a varanasi vase so this vase is made from the sounds of banaras moving on we have uh, a beautiful looking uh, ambience lighting product it's a home decor interior product which is made from the sound of fire and there is a tea light which is placed inside which is making it glow uh we also have an art object kind of a product uh which is a conch um and the and the undulations that you can see on the conch are actually the vibrations or the waves that have uh, been produced by the playing of the conch moving on um uh, we also have products made specially for our clients where uh, we are using their sounds or a particular message that they have recorded Uh, which can be used for gifting just to give you a use case scenario consider an occasion of wedding and where the wedding vows are happening you know where the couple uh, have very special messages for each other those uh, special and personalized messages or those wedding vows can be really realized as rings or pendants and this is how they look so as of now we have rings and pendants um, created from sound uh we are also developing an application 
uh, which you can use to scan the sound surface and relive the uh, the sounds that were used to create it so the real uh, interesting part is here where uh, you can choose any particular time where you want to relive and re experience that special moment which has gone into making of this product so we have uh, three uh, basic designs we have a square we have a circle and a heart and as of now we are doing rings and pendants there are a few more uh, designs that we will add to our portfolio but as of now um, this is what we have to offer and soon we'll be launching them online uh, so i think that's that's about what i've been doing for the last 2 to 1/2 years and i just want to talk about uh, this place and innovation lab in general uh in my experience for the last 2 and a half 3 years the one thing that i've realized is that more than what you're working on i think the environment and the people around you is even more important than what you choose to work on um i think there is a old very famous old saying that probably you are the sum of the five friends that you have i think uh i cannot tell you how true that is and this place uh just because of the mentors just because of all the facilities that are available uh in this place it has helped me uh develop think different and uh do what i'm doing currently uh and fortunately uh for us there is a lot of cross learning that happens with every batch that comes into the innovation program so uh in the uh, there are a few students from the third cohort who have worked on some projects of songkar and uh we uh i can definitely say on behalf of the songkar team that we have learned a lot from them and i'm sure even they had an amazing time here so i think i would request now um tanvi and akshay to take over and share some of their experiences and what did they experience when they were uh, working here in the innovation lab thank you so hello everyone my name is tanvi parmar and i have done my undergraduate in lifestyle accessory designing now i am a part of innovation design uh, this place uh, gives a lot of freedom a lot of diversity of people to work with and learn with also there are great mentors to uh, learn with uh, being a part of sonkar Uh, i have worked as a packaging designing the very first thing that we did was to dive into the world of imagination and create scenarios for how would we gift the person that we love a very special thing so from that scenarios we extracted a lot of keywords as we see here and then we saw how it aligns with the personality of sonkar then we started the process of applying these keywords on our packaging and giving it a character these are few of the concepts that have been selected and we are working on so all we knew throughout the process was the products of extreme uh, love has to be packaged with extreme care so my throughout uh, the journey uh, with vinit sir and ketan sir has been very nice to learn the process closely with them has been very much uh, like astonishing for me and yeah i have been grateful for it and will be continuing so good afternoon my name is akshay sanga i'm from hyderabad and uh, i did my bachelor's in mechanical engineering after which i joined the innovation program at mit id and uh, it was a complete shift in scenario for me to find a place where i can learn like this So as for my live project I joined uh, Songkar where I was a part of the service design team along with Charvi Jain so where we had to um, for a unique product like Songkar where sound was made into something tangible we had to come up with a whole story which was unique for it as well to create the customer experience and uh, for such an experience we had to think out of the box and come up with a story which we then converted into uh, tangible uh, service design elements like uh, where first we had to onboard the customers and uh, after which we had to think about the pre and post engagement 
um, following which we also had to brainstorm about the uh, website uh, flow and architecture, all using the elements that we thought about as a story and bringing it back down to reality. So this whole process of ideating and imagining and all that is something that I will take away because uh, it, it sure does invoke the thought process. And um, even the uh, joy of working in a company that actually is putting products out there is also a pretty valuable of an experience to take away from this, I guess. Yes, so thank you, Tanvi. Thank you, Akshay. And thank you, Vineet and the entire team uh, who has been consistently putting an effort to make this uh, wonderful dream come true. And uh, again, just to reiterate, and as you have heard from the people that it is best experienced when, when you do things on your own. And that's what the program also believes in learning by doing. And we provide numerous opportunities. These are in interest of time, we could only share two of the projects, but each and every student has a project which is running in parallel or which they are getting involved in and which is a good combination of design, technology and business. So yeah, that's what uh, we are here for. and. Happy to answer any queries, any questions that the audience may have. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm Sushmita Das. Uh, right now, I'm pursuing my PhD in biomedical engineering field. And okay. that is also related to some innovative design thinking part. So uh, can you help me in this uh, part that uh, how can I uh, do something innovative design in the prosthetic technology? That is the uh, research work. Okay, okay. So I think uh, if you're already pursuing your PhD, uh, the best way to work is uh, uh, to kind of pick project brief or a specific problem area that, that you need help in. And uh, as you have already seen that we are uh, kind of heavily working into the entire healthcare space. And yeah. uh, we have a good access to uh, all the uh, facilities and to the mentors of the bioengineering program, to the material science and to the design. So if you could help us with some specific uh, problem statement or a project which uh, you, you need help in, I think we can surely put a team which can take up that as a project. And then we can work out a model in which uh, all whatever you want to achieve can be achieved and then we can uh, kind of work out the right engagement for that. Okay, sir. Uh, can you share your details and I mean that mail ID and any contact number so that sure. I can contact you with all the details? Sure, sure. We'll just type it out in the chat window and you can take it from there. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Vineet, can you... Uh, understand what's written in the chat window and probably then answer it accordingly. Yeah, uh, I think they're saying actually sounds are how to use unmusable design. So I think I'll just try to answer from what I can understand. Uh, basically, we have our own um, proprietary algorithm and uh, there are different ways of visualizing sound um, where uh, majorly there are three, four different ways in which we um, physically realize or visualize sound. So there are three or four different set of algorithms which are very unique. Um, so some use all the different components of sound, whereas some do not use them. Uh, so I think to answer your question as to how they are realized physically is by uh, picking and choosing the different components of sound, how we want to use. And if I want to add something to that, I would say that at the end of our uh, platform technology, like what we have is a CAD, uh, CAD information and that CAD information can be 3D printed or it can also be CNC machined. So that's our output. So all our algorithm or all our platform technology outputs can directly be uh, either CNC machined or 3D printed. So that's how we go from something non-tangible to tangible. So. I hope that answered the question. Harshesh, you want to add something about the prosthetics thing, which ma'am was asking, anything that comes to your mind? Hi, yes. So Sushmita, like uh, Harshit sir said that we are very well uh, aligned with the healthcare space as well in the innovation uh, uh, program as well. In fact, 
uh, many of the bioengineering students do come down over to the innovation program and then work with us. Uh, with respect to prosthetic as a field, it is extremely uh, new. It's just the state of the art technology being worked everywhere. Uh, like Sir said, if you can just kind of devise a brief for us, and uh, I will also share my uh, email ID. You can send it directly to me as well. And then we can also see if there are any possible methods of collaboration through the innovation program, or if you can also uh, work with us here. Thanks, Arjish. Thanks. That surely helps. Okay, cool. So I think there are a uh, few more questions which have come to the team and uh, we'll try and answer it one on one uh, because uh, there are some specific details which have been asked. So thank you for joining. And I think this was a wonderful experience uh, for us also to share our stories and the projects that we work on. Uh, in terms of the program, I think the, uh, the admissions team has all the information about how to go about the applications and the dates and all of that. So that information is easily available to you through multiple sources. And we look forward to uh, some of you joining and being part of this uh, initiative, MIT ID Innovation. Thank you. Over to you, Bhavika ma'am, for the concluding part. Thank you. So thank you, Professor Harshit Desai sir and his entire team for the most interesting and inspiring session. And thank you all to the participants for joining us. So as said by sir, uh, to know more about MIT Institute of Design, kindly visit our website. And for any queries, please contact the admission team. Lastly, I request the technical team to please play the AV of MIT Institute of Design. Thank you all. I make the world graphical. I add value through my products. I am an animator. I am a filmmaker. I develop trends. I transform designs to reality. I create environments. I translate stories to furniture. I design experiences. I'm an immersive media designer. I design mobility. This is not only a design institute. This is a design lab. Join us in our design movement.